two weeks ago, we got the new Apple Watch Ultra with the Oceanic Plus dive app installed on this one. We got so excited that we jumped straight on a plane and flew down to the Mediterranean to test this one out. We've been diving with it down there. We've been diving with it here in cold water. And now some 15 dives later, we're ready to give you a in-depth review of what we think about the Oceanic Plus dive computer. Comparing it to the depth app that comes pre-installed on the watch, we're gonna be comparing it to some of the other major dive computers on the market. But first, let's just rewind a bit. When Apple came out with the new Apple Watch Ultra, they also announced that for the first time ever, an Apple Watch now has built-in dive sensors. This created quite a lot of excitement and buzz in the dive community. The Depth app pre-installed on the Ultra makes the watch into a dive watch. So now you can see depth, you can see time spent in water on this one. But Apple also partnered up with Oceanic to create the Oceanic Plus app that turns the Apple Watch Ultra into a fully functioning dive computer. But this announcement didn't stop the bus in the dive community because the Oceanic app was also announced as a subscription-based app. What? A subscription like Netflix? That's crazy, isn't it? For a dive computer. This, on one hand, I hate subscriptions. On the other hand, I love the dive computer app from Oceanic. I love the Apple Watch Ultra. So I'm kind of mixed in this. So in this video, the first thing we're gonna focus on is actually the price of the Apple Watch and the price of the subscription, if it's worth it. And we're gonna be comparing it to prices of some of the competing dive computers. Then we're gonna come into what we like about this dive computer and the app. We're gonna come into what we don't like about the Apple. And last but not least, I'm gonna tell you whether or not I think this is worth buying. And I'm gonna tell you who I think should buy it. Let's dive in. Usually the price of a product or a dive computer in any review is just a quick point you touch and then we move on. It's a question of, can you afford the device? Is it worth the price compared to what you're getting? And how is it compared to the competing product? But in this case, it's different. As I just mentioned, there's a subscription fee for the app itself. And then there's the $7.99 you pay for this one. And this is complete different because first time ever, it's a dive computer on a subscription. There are four available options for the app. You buy them on the phone, you sync it up with the dive computer, and then you're good to go. The prices are $5 for one day. It's uh, You get one month for $10. Then you get a whole year for $80. And then there's a family option for, I think it's $130. So there's plenty of options you can choose from. Still, in the dive community, there was a lot of buzz of Apple coming out. There's definitely been a lot of talking about the subscription-based and I don't think people are all too happy about it. And if you look at it, $7.99 for this one and then $80 a year, uh, multiply the, the amount of years you're gonna be using it for. Now it's stacking up to being a, a premium dive computer. We're at the range of, of Garmin Descent and the Shearwater Terek. And when you look at the dive computer features on this one, you're paying way too much for it. But just bear with me, we're gonna come to the dive computer and how it is in just one minute. However, if you are looking for it, a smartwatch and Apple Watch, this is a premium quality product. Same with the Series 8, you're getting a lot of features, activity tracking, you're getting crash detections, you're getting fall detections, you're getting a bunch of smartwatch features that are really cool. And, and comparing it to the smartwatch features of the Garmin products, this is in a class for itself. So when you look at that, the Apple Watch Series 8 that doesn't have the dive computer features, that's priced in at $499. So you're just paying that $300 extra for the Ultra that has the dive computer features. So now we're at a different price level. We're closer at the beginner level, mid-level dive computer pricing. So you have $300 for the unit or the dive computer features, and then you have the $80 subscription for the dive computer. Still a high price, but it's a better comparison to the dive computer features. And on top of that, instead of having an activity tracker, a dive computer, and a watch you can wear out for fine dining or just in everyday use. Now you have one unit to rule them all. Destroy it! Now we're at that point you have been waiting for. How is it diving with the Apple Watch Ultra and the Oceanic Plus app? Well, like any other Apple product, it's a pleasure to use. The usability of it, the, how it looks, how it feels, easy, nice. The plug and play of this one, straight out of the box, install the app, get the app on the watch, then you're good to go easy to use. I've been using this, well, out of the box from this one, it's as easy to use for me as the Garmin Descent MK2i that I've been using, I think the last two years. So this is saying a bit about how easy it is using it. I'm not saying the Garmin is difficult to use, but, but this is just, you push the screen, you change what you wanna change. Changing to Night Sharks, 
changing the algorithm. Easy to set up, easy to check your dive planning. The dive planning on both the phone and the app is really good as well. There's also the app location planner where you can check out the weather forecasts. And I'm quite sure once they get more data in, Oceania is going to put in a lot of this data so you can actually check out for the dive site. How is the visibility if divers has been out earlier on? It's not a feature that's working 100% yet. The app itself is not as customizable as, for example, the MK2i or some of the other high-end dive computers like the Shearwaters, uh, where you can change around where you want to show and what you want to show on the screen. This is more plug and play. So, so that's also a trade-off to take in. Ease of use, not as customizable. I mean, look at this, how easy it is to navigate. You're never going to be struggling with finding the right place to, to push, going from that one to four buttons where one is select, one is back, one is up and down, or you have the one button push where you one quick click will shift and hold will select the menu, but you're never really sure where to go or how to get there. I mean, countless of times I've been asked as instructor to change someone's dive computer from air to night trucks or changing uh, from meters to feet because people just didn't know how to use that one. And I was struggling as well because I've never been using their dive computer. And this is the case when it's a thing you're spending or you're using one or two uh, times a year and then you don't really look at it. You forget what to do and how to go there. With the Ultra, you're gonna be using it every day. And the ease of use of the app is just a really big plus. The Apple Watch Ultra is great at giving you notifications about your daily health. Um, also alarms if your heart rate is going up too much. It really monitors everything about your health. And there's a health app in, in the iPhone that you can check up up and you can actually see how well you're doing. They also have this activity progress of pushing you to, to do more exercise in your daily life. Personally, I like it. It actually helps me get up more often or get out exercising more often. This really falls well into the dive computer app. These notification and alarms is something that, that Oceanic has built into the dive computer. So anytime you're coming close to your limits or the, the computer's limits, it will give you a big bright alarm. It will give you audible alarms and a haptic alarm so you can feel it even through a light wetsuit, you can actually feel these vibrations. Once they come up, you can click the action button to stop them. So let's say you're reaching 130 feet. It will say now you've reached your maximum depth. You can click it and then you can continue if that what you're doing. The app will then stop working because it's been alarming you and at it's max at 40 meters. You can also set your personal depth. Let's say you're an open water diver, you have a max of, of 60 feet. You can put this into the settings that your maximum depth is, well, 16 feet. Once you're getting close to that one, it will start alarming you as well and telling you you're crossing this limits. If you go beyond that, again, stop the alarm, it'll go off, it'll go away. Also, if you're coming close to your no decompression limits, it will start. Again, you can set the, the time frame. Should it alarm you five minutes, eight minutes before that, or not at all? Just once you reach your no decompression limits, well, it will it will give up this alarm. You can turn it off. If you have five minutes left on a nice dive side, you can still have time. Then once you have one minute left, you can start ascending. If you go over the no decompression time as well, alarm will go off. You can turn it off and then you can continue now. It will show you instead really bright yellow time to surface. It will show you how long time you need to stop at uh, 10 feet. So it makes it really easy to dive with. Everything is displayed in a big bright screen so everybody can see it. Yeah, I would say even if you have issues with your eyesight, this is a step up from any other dive computer. Alarms itself, comparing that to any other dive computer I've been using, bright screen alarms that are flashing compared to Often just a small bar going up or flashing red or something like that telling you to slow down your ascent or safe to stop or small counter will start when this is changing the alarms to a complete new level. Coming up, it's safe to stop a big bright yellow warning is going to come up again. You click again action button to remove it and then a big yellow counter is going to show the time. It's super easy to keep track of. Also, if you're doing deco, it's going to be the same big warning and then your decompression time is going to show. It's really easy to keep track of. It's really easy to see even if you have issues looking at it at a normal dive computer. This one brightness wise, size wise of it, it's easy to see for everybody. Using this one underwater, the touchscreen locks as soon as you go underwater in the dive mode. So you can only use the wheel and then the action button. In the top of the screen, 
you'll see this dive data is always available. You'll, you'll see the depth and then the no decompression time. At the left over here, there's a small wheel showing you your ascent descent. So as you go down, it'll, it'll roll one way. As you go the other way, it'll roll the other way. If you're going up a bit too fast, it'll start turning red. And then going up way too fast, it'll, it'll give this big bright warning to slow you down. Then as you turn the wheel, so you basically use the wheel to shift display uh, menu, but it's only the bottom part that will move. So you have four different screens to choose from. First menu, the one you see in the beginning, will show you the dive time, minutes to surface, and then water temperature. Scroll one time down, you'll get your maximum depth, current ascent rate, and then battery status. If you then continue down, you get to the compass, press the action button to set a heading, and then as you move a bit to the sides, either way, it will show you how much off you are of your wish direction. And then the last screen will kind of give you a, a recap of, of the dive settings, so your gradient level, your PO2, and so on. It's quite easy to shift up and down, even with gloves on, it's simple. Most divers won't need to shift unless you need to go down to the compass, but, but you do have the options to do so. Getting ready to dive, diving with the Oceanic Plus app underwater is really easy. I think I've said it a bunch of times in this review, the usability of, of this app and, and the Ultra is just amazing. Using the phone app, connecting it to the Apple Watch, you can easily plan your dive. There's no decompression dive planner or a dive planner, both on the app and on the phone. Uh, there's also a location planner where you can map out where you're going. You can look at the weather forecast. You can check out visibility. There's a lot of data that they're going to be using from other divers, and then they're going to add it in. Water temperature as well is automatically being uploaded. The visibility you set yourself, but but it's possible to actually check it out. Um, and, and you get this whole logbook experience in the Oceanic Plus app. I know there's a bunch of other brands out there doing the same. I don't use it that much. I know other people that are and are happy for it. I can see this having a bigger aspect in terms of this being an Apple product and you can share it and it's gonna be shared with your health app on the uh, iPhone. If it's gonna work completely, I'm not sure. Still using this one and especially using it underwater is amazing. As you can see in the screen, it is super bright. It is by far the brightest screen I've ever seen on a dive computer. When comparing it, usually that was the Tarek that had that price of having the most bright screen. They're quite known for it. And, and just look at these two compared. I would say it's almost a factor two on top of the Tarek. So it, it really is so bright that even in ultra bright sunlight, you can still see all the data. Uh, it's used also as the smartwatch features when you're on land on sunny days, you can see everything coming up right at the surface from a dive, even with the sunlight reflecting in the the water, you can still see all the data on this one. This is the most solid Apple Watch to date. It's rated down to 100 meters. For diving, you can use it for 40 meters. That's the dive sensors in there. The case itself is made out of titanium and it feels robust and durable. The screen is sapphire crystal and it sits just slightly below uh, a bevel to protect it from scratching. So you really feel like this is made for ultra sports and something you can actually use on the go while diving as well. It comes in just under two inches across. It's 1.7 inches wide, and then it's just over a half inch thick, which seems like a large watch to have on your wrist, but comparing it to other dive computers that you can also use every day, like the uh, Garmin MK2i or the Shiwata Terek or Suntu D5s, this is almost the same in comparison. If we look at the, the dive computers only made for diving, like Chris Donatello, Suntu Supernova or Shiwata Terek or or those lines of computers. It's much smaller, give you a smaller screen, but for everyday use, this is a bit larger, but a lot of the same as the other dive computers. It's square, the screen itself, which is not what you're used to from a watch that's always round. So that takes some getting used to, but once you kind of see that it's more a computer than it actually is a watch, you, you kind of also know why they chose to make it square and not round. I have a quite large wrist and I'm used to wearing the MK2i. So for me, getting used to this change didn't take that long, but I do recommend you just try out a large watch, wear it for a few days before you get this one, especially if you have a smaller wrist, just to see if this is something for you. If you're used to wearing a dive computer on every day or a sport watch or an active tracker, I guess you're used to it. But, but this is the largest of the Apple watches. So it, it does take some time getting used to. For the straps, there are three different models to pick from. We have the trail loop, there's the alpine loop, and then the ocean band. 
right here, the Ocean Band, that's the one I've been using. I haven't tried the other ones out, uh, but I hear they're quite nice as well. This one is made for ocean sports, so it's made with silicone, which means it doesn't trap in water. These uh, small loops in between do trap some water, but a quick shake and it's out. It's not something that's going to be wet all day, as, as you see with some other fabrics. There's three different colors. Uh, you got the Midnight Blue, or Midnight Black, I'm not sure. There's the white band, and then there is this yellow loop here as well. It's comfortable, nice to have on. I don't feel the big difference between this and a lot of the other dive computers I'm wearing. Uh, so, so this is kind of what a dive computer usually does, silicone strap, it's nice, it doesn't trap in water, it fits. It's durable as well. I've been trying to pull a bit on it, nothing seems to be breaking on it. You can change the strap if you do break it, uh, but I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. If you want, there is, so the, it's a bit limited with the different colors of, of these uh, straps, especially for the diving, but it is possible to buy some of the other straps as well. And it is Apple product as well, so you can get third-party straps if you want one that's more fancy or if you need something else. It's easy to change them in, click and go. For this size of the strap, I'm not too happy, to be honest. Right now, I'm at the fourth uh, last loop that's without wearing anything. When I'm wearing a wetsuit, I'm at the last or the second last using it on dry shoot, I had to put it on the wrist instead. There is an extension to this one that you can buy separately. I think it's about $50, but something you need to buy on the side of, of the quite pricey product already. This is something that's usually standard, comes along with a dive computer like Garmin, Shearwater, um, even Oceanic's own uh, dive computer, Oceanic Air, has in an extra spare um, strap you put in between. I think this could have added this extra strap in to the package. So let's just real quick talk about the algorithms on this dive computer. If you're sort of a diver, you probably know all about it. You at least know the dive tables. And the algorithms uh, is, is essentially a formula that measures your dive time, your depth, your gas mix, and then it calculates in. So it gives you your dive time or your no decompression limits. How deep can you dive? How long can you stay there? As you move up, it'll recalculate all of this. So you get this nice dive profile. That's a quick talk about algorithms. The Oceanic Plus app uses the Bullman, or unmodified Bullman uh, CHL16C algorithm. You don't need to know much more about that, but it's this same Garmin and Shearwater is using, so it's a well-tested, well-used algorithm. You're all safe to use it. There is gradient factors you can set on this, so you can make it more conservative. So with most products, there's always things we don't like, and the Apple Watch Ultra is no exception to that. First point of mine on my list is the depth limit. The Apple Watch Ultra is rated to 330 feet, 100 meters, but the app itself will only give you dive data down to 130 feet, 40 meters. And what does that mean for you as a diver? Well, first off, if you're planning on doing any technical diving or if you are doing technical diving, this is not for you. Move along, you can't use it. If you are a diver that's often diving at the limits near 130 meters, uh, 130 feet, sorry, 40 meters, then this is not for you either because there's always the chance that you go below, even though there's a lot of alarms, a lot of warnings, there's always a chance that you end up below 130 feet if you are diving at the limits. Then again, this is not for you because what happens is as soon as you go below, it will stop tracking your dive time. It will only, once you go above again, it will show you your current depth and then it will show you your time in, which means you don't really have a dive computer anymore that you can use. So what you can do is slowly ascend to the surface and it won't track anymore anything. So you actually, you can't use this one for as, as a dive computer for 24 hours. At that point, you're then all desaturated and you're ready to dive again. If you are a diver, diving well within your limits, if you're a certified open water diver, advanced open water diver, diving at 60, 100 feet, then this is not a problem. The depth limit is not a problem and you don't need to go down to these depths. It's just if you know that you're often diving near the limits, if your favorite house reef or your favorite dive site is close to that limit, then this doesn't work because things happen sometimes in diving. So keep that in mind when doing these considerations. If this is for you, deep diving won't work. Standard recreational diving works just fine. Battery time is the second point on my list. On a standard dive day, I've been charging this one all night. I took it up in the morning, went out, did two dives. In the afternoon, sitting, drinking a beer with my dive buddies, I checked it and I was at 52% battery. 
which means using it all evening, all night, next morning, getting ready for my next day, I wouldn't have had enough battery for the next two dives. I think that's an issue. The problem here is the Apple Watch Ultra is active throughout the morning in between the dives, of course, on the dives as well. And then afterwards, you can speak. I, I was on the phone with my wife on this one. It's brilliant um, doing a conversation just with the phone, but it's using up a lot of battery. The diving itself didn't take out more than 20-15% for each dive, but all of the accumulation of the battery until then, that just takes up a lot of battery. And I would fear that I forget to charge it at night and then I'm not ready for the next day. Or if you're an instructor working every day, that you really need to make sure that you charge it every day. Otherwise, bring a power bank and then a charge it charges fast, but still, that's an issue in my opinion. And when I'm comparing it to other dive computers, uh, Garmin MK2i, you have three, four days of, of daily usage plus diving, um, seawater even more because you're not using it that much doing your daily activities or surface activities. Dive computers like Soup to Soup Nova or Cressy Donatello or something like that, uh, oceanic uh, air computers, you have weeks and weeks of diving activity well within your one battery. And then you can change that one uh, on the dive side if you want, if you have a user replaceable dive computer. So this is an issue in terms of that. It's really worth uh, keeping in mind that you need to charge it every night when diving. So what am I missing on this one? Well, one thing is air integration. A lot of the dive computers in the same categories has this one. Uh, we don't see it on the beginner computers, but but mid-range uh, high-end dive computers has it. And I'm, I think I could use it as well in this one. Is it something you need? No. Is it something that's nice to have? Yes, for this price, I think it should be in. Will it be in as Garmin did? They didn't have it in the Mark 1, but they added it to the Mark 2. Will this be in the Apple Watch Ultra version 9 or something like that, or Apple Watch Ultra 9. Uh, I don't know how you name that one. That might be, I hope we'll see that. Another aspect I'm missing a bit in this app and app community is the social sharing part. It's possible to share your dive, uh, but it's kind of like a picture you share of your dive profile. So basically how deep and how you went up. But the whole app itself has a nice location planner where you can see where you were, the weather, uh, you can add in your temperature. And this is not part of, of the social part of it. I would love to have this shareable. I think like the Paralens app was doing with, with sharing um, location. You can actually see some footage of that. If this was integrated into the Oceanic app, that would be really nice for me to check out a dive site. And I could see someone been diving with the Oceanic Ultra or the Oceanic app previously in the day and they were actually saying like, so there's 100 meters or 100 feet visibility, nice, or there's five feet of visibility. Well, I'll take something else because you can actually plot this into the logbook. And I would love to see this shared as well as data. It's not something there. I hope it's something Oceanic and Apple is adding to the future. What am I missing in this? I found uh, some, some parts of it. I'm not sure if I found everything. What do you think this one is missing? What would you like to see in the Apple Watch Ultra? Leave a comment below. I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what, what you think this one is missing. Now we're at the end of review or almost at the end. We're almost at that part where I'm going to tell you if I think this is a product you should buy or at least who should buy it. But first I want to talk about why this is such a big news. This is Apple making a product for divers. In my opinion, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Apple is the biggest tech giant in the world, and now they're turning their eyes on the diving community. They're gonna bring in, or they are bringing in, a lot of innovation. It's gonna be pushing dive computers forward. As I mentioned in the beginning, kind of like they did with the iPhone, pushing the whole way we look at cellular devices today. They're doing that now for the diving industry, at least for the dive computers. I don't know. I don't think they're gonna go into regulators anytime soon. Oh, well, the amount of uses that Apple has and they're going to be pushing out a dive computing device to is, is limitless. There's so many people that are going to be buying this because they want the state of the art Apple product. But now they're also exposed to diving because they have a easy to use beginner friendly dive computer on their wrist. I see this as great news. Uh, it might not be that the Apple Watch is for you. It might not be for every diver, but this news is big for every divers, in my opinion. Okay, so who is this actually for? Well, you're a person looking for an Apple Watch. So much of the price is tied up to a lot of the Apple Watch features. 
not that much is tied up to the computer or the diving parts of it. So you definitely need to be looking or needing the Apple Watch features. Otherwise, this is not for you. But you're also a person who dives regularly or, or at least from time to time, and then it makes sense to add in these dive features. And this is where the subscription also makes sense. Now you have a $10 subscription for one month of diving. I know so many people who do one or two weeks of diving a year and that's it. Usually their go-to would be to rent the dive computer at the dive center. That's easily $10 a day. Or if they have one of the budget options like a Suntu Supernova or a Chrissy Donatello, they would be buying the user replaceable battery anyway, which is around $5. So you almost at that same level. Now you just have a state-of-the-art, really great beginner dive computer. So you might not be a big fan of the subscription base, especially if you're diving every day and you're going to be using this subscription, the yearly subscription, year over year. But think in again that you're getting all these smartwatch features. And this is where it really comes in as still an okay trade-off, in my opinion. When I'm comparing it to the competing, I think the only fair comparison is to the Garmin Descent G1 Solar or the MK2, because these are the ones that you can also use every day. Uh, whereas all the other dive computers works for diving, you can tell time on the surface, but they don't do anything else. The Garmin also has the, the sports features and the smartwatch features. It's completely different going from the Garmin, which is quite basic. They're really good at sport, but quite basic smartwatch features to the Apple Ultra that is really good at the smartwatch features and then a bit more basic on both the diving features and the sports features. So that's kind of the trade-off that you want to look at as well. Looking at the G1 uh, Solar or the Garmin G1 Solar, it's priced at, I think it's $699, so around $700, which is the same as the Ultra. And then you have the app on top of that. So that's kind of the same comparison. You can use it for the same. The G1 Solar has a smaller screen, uh, but longer battery time. So kind of a trade-off. If you're looking at the Garmin Descent MK2, we're at around, I think, $1,200. So even with the subscription over years, they're still quite a long way. Then the Garmin Descent MK2i also, the G1, has a lot of the tech features that you're not getting in the Apple Watch. So really the trade-off here is, are you using it for everyday use? Do you need it for features above the surface? And do you want a state-of-the-art smartwatch or do you want a state-of-the-art dive computer? This is kind of the trade-off you need to look at. So I guess it all comes down to what are you looking for? Are you looking for a smartwatch that can do diving? Then this is this is it. Are you looking for a dive computer you can just use for diving? Then this is too pricey. You can, you can get better, cheaper options out there. Uh, are you looking for a dive computer smartwatch uh, that can do tech diving as well? Garmin is definitely the one for you. Are you looking for just a tech diving computer? I'll, I'll take off with sheer waters. Can I recommend this? Yes, again, if you are looking for that smartwatch feature and you are a diver. I've been using this one for a lot of other sports activities. They are tracking a lot of what you're doing every day, which I love. Um, I've been using it now for around two weeks. I've been diving with it around 15 times. Um, I think I've gotten to know it quite well. Will I be changing back to the, the Garmin Descent MK2? I, I don't know. I, I like this right now. I love all the features it has and Will I recommend this to, to people? Yes, I do think this is good. This is definitely among the top dive computers I've been diving with. And if you are always within those depth limits it has, you are getting nice premium dive computer in a nice premium smartwatch for you. I think this will conclude the whole review of this. If you have any questions about this dive computer, any of the other dive computers, leave a comment down below. I'd love to get back to you. And also, if you think I'm missing anything in, in the review of this, what would you like to see me talk about? What do you think should be in the dive computer as well? Just we'll leave a note down there. I'd love to hear your feedback of, of what you would like for that price, for the subscription. Yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'm Torben from Dive In. This is the Apple Watch Ultra with the Oceanic Plus app installed. Have a nice day.